Hey everyone, I'm Richard and this, this is the one you've been waiting for. NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080, the first FinFET GPU. And it's fast, really fast. Coming back from NVIDIA's Editor's Day in Austin, Texas, I thought I had a handle on just how fast this would be. 20% faster than Titan X perhaps? Yeah, actually it's faster, a lot faster in some cases. NVIDIA has delivered some strong generational leaps across the years and it's done it again. In fact, let's start by taking a look at performance of The Division on the old GTX 780 Ti, maxed out here at 1080p resolution. Now, this GPU was released in November 2013 and it was the ultimate iteration of the silicon used to power the original Titan. And yeah, it's still a good card today at 1080p, handing in a respectable 46 FPS average. GTX 980, a smaller chip with a newer technology launched 10 months later. At the time, it only seemed to offer a smaller bump over a GTX 780 Ti, but on modern games like this one, it's 25% faster. Now then, Titan X, the big chip Maxwell, and the true successor to the 780 Ti arrived in March 2015. And as we add that to the graph, we're 59% faster than 780 Ti. And now for the one you've been waiting for, GTX 1080. It's over twice twice as fast, handing in a 94 FPS average. Stack up the percentages and it goes like this. On this game at least, Nvidia's new card is 27% faster than Titan X. It's 62% faster than GTX 980. And it absolutely canes the 780 Ti. It's 102% faster. Now, you might recall from Nvidia's announcement that they said that GTX 1080 offers the performance of two 980s in SLI. Well, back of an envelope calculation here across all of our gaming tests, which are still ongoing, we actually peg 1080 at around 65 to 70% faster on average. But in theory, you'd expect to see two 980s in parallel beat the 1080, not the other way around. So we only have limited data here, but it's illuminating. This is Assassin's Creed Unity with an i7 6700K at 4.6 gigahertz, paired with GTX 980 in SLI and stacked up against the GTX 1080. So you can see here that SLI does have the advantage. In fact, it's about 9% faster really. But check this out. Crisis 3 on 1080 is indeed faster than two 980s. The bottom line here is that whether 1080 is faster than 980 SLI all comes down to one factor, scalability. Different games scale differently in SLI. Some do well, some don't. In the latter case, GTX 1080 will almost always hand in better performance. But in other titles, that may not be the case, as you can see with Shadow of Mordor here. Now, let's take a look at a few more games, moving up to 4K resolution this time, where Fury X tends to perform best. So here's The Witcher 3 maxed out at 4K, but with Hairworks turned off. And we're seeing a 40 FPS minimum on 1080, and that's a 43 FPS average. At 4K, that's pretty neat. Here we're 33% faster than Fury X, 29% faster than Titan X, and 71% faster than 980. Not bad. Even a maxed out Assassin's Creed Unity is actually playable at 4K here, a test we still include in our revised benchmark suite owing to its enormous impact on VRAM and generally challenging performance. And in this extremely testing Project Cars replay on max settings with SMAA anti-aliasing, we're hitting a 38 FPS average here, 30% faster than Titan X and a massive 84% faster than Fury X. So yeah, performance on AMD does change radically according to the track and GPU effects. So the question is really, to what extent is 1080 a game changer? And is AMD completely off the map now? Well, I'd say that in some respects, they have a mountain to climb, but there are signs that Nvidia's domination isn't complete. So check this out. It's Hitman, maxed out at 4K, running under both DX11 and DX12. Yeah, it's close, perhaps closer than Nvidia would like. Under DX11, the 1080 is only 10% faster, and that drops down to a mere 6.3% under DX12. However, rerun this comparison at 1080p, and the percentages are much more in Nvidia's favor. 1080 is around 20% faster there. And of course, there's Ashes of the Singularity. 
It's a game that really works well on AMD hardware, overhauling much of the green team's DX11 advantage, even at lower resolutions. And of course, we all know what happens with DX12, where the Fury X comprehensively outpoints Titan X. So what happens when it's stacked up against GTX 1080? Well, based on the benchmarks at 4K, we see this. Under DX11, GTX 1080 is 23% faster, but under DX12, that lead shrinks to just 9%. Regardless though, it is faster. And you'll know that DX12 performance is pretty much on par with DX11. There's not much in the way of a frame rate regression that we saw with other Nvidia cards. So I think the bottom line is this. There are always games that favor one architecture over another. Hitman, Ashes of the Singularity, well, they run great on AMD. And while GTX 1080 is much, much faster than Fury X across the board, you can see titles that do favor one architecture, and these can make up some or even a lot of the difference. But the idea that AMD is going to dominate in future with DirectX 12, well, I think they're well positioned, certainly compared to their DX11 performance, but there's still everything to play for. And to be frank, we shouldn't really be expecting anything in the way of miracles in terms of DX12 performance in the short term. So check this out. You've already seen that on our test system at least, there's not a huge boost to Hitman performance, whether you're running on DX11 or DX12, whether you're with AMD or Nvidia. And it's the same thing here with Rise of the Tomb Raider. The truth is that only certain systems will benefit with DX12, and that doesn't seem to include our i7 setup. In fact, whether you're using AMD or Nvidia, there's actually a small drop to performance using DX12. So I think it's the case that the API is definitely finding its feet right now and DX11 is still the primary API for PC gaming. So look, I've sort of biased this review to the performance of the GTX 1080, but there are other things to discuss too. This is the Founders Edition GTX 1080, which essentially means it's the NVIDIA reference design. As I did the testing across multiple generations of NVIDIA GPUs, the thing that stood out to me was just how quiet this thing is, even under load, and yet no coil whine that I could hear either. And on top of that, it's much more power efficient too. This particular scene from Crisis 3 puts an insane load on the GPU. I like to use it for overclocking stability testing, but it's also good for getting some peak power consumption metrics as well. And here's how the table looks. Only GTX 980 is the more frugal card here, and obviously that's handing in a much lower level of performance for a very similar power draw. And yeah, that R9 390X result, it really isn't a typo. So what's the bottom line here? Well, Titan X, GTX 980 Ti, they were frankly monstrous GPUs, and they still are. If that is a taste of GTX 1070 performance, then um, wow. GTX 1080 is even faster though. It's the new state of the art and a frankly brilliant piece of engineering. As Ferris Bueller might say, if you have the means, I highly recommend picking one up. But that's all I have for you right now. Please like and subscribe to support our work and don't forget to check out those reams of benchmarks elsewhere on the channel. And I'll see you soon.